I'd like to first start off by saying good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon. All oh, right. Well, I should have wrote Brother Greg up there too, but I didn't have no room for that. But anyway, uh, the title of today's lesson is going to be The Great Tribulation. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it the last time I was here about the timeline, you know, trying to give you a timeline. But I want you guys to understand one thing. There's things going on behind the scenes that you cannot see. In this world and in this life, you have, you have flesh and blood and you have spirit beings. And these spirit beings are, uh, God has these spirit beings prepared to let certain things happen at certain times. Mm -hmm. When we read about the Lord, when he's going to seal his servants, he told the four winds, he told the angels to hold these four winds back. There's a lot of stuff going on that you just can't see. Because you have a spiritual side of this life as you have a physical side. And everything is done according to your works. According to your works. That's what the Lord said. He's going to judge every man and every woman according to your works. And if your faith is weak, you're going to be weak when we're talking Bible. The Lord have you come to class to get an understanding of what he's doing. Sunday people, when they go to class, they don't get anything. But what the Lord tries to do for you is he tries to give you a look into the future from the past. And that's what he's trying to do. He is trying to prepare you for what's coming. Because there's a storm coming. And if you're not prepared for the storm, the storm is going to take you with it. I don't care if you speak fluent Hebrew, you, you wearing fringes in your mind and on your clothes, I don't care what happens. If your mind ain't right, you ain't right, and the Lord is going to take you out. Lord killed a whole bunch of us in the wilderness. Israel and the stranger killed a whole bunch of us in the wilderness. When they left Egypt and they got out there, Moses had 3,000 killed for worshiping that gold calf. You are not safe until you're saved. That's when you're saved. You're saved. It is time for us to stop joking around and stop playing around. Because the Lord got angels walking around taking notes on who is right and who is not. We brothers got to get on our job. We got to get on this job to prepare ourselves for what's coming. The greatest tool that Satan ever had was deception. The Lord told you that he was going to deceive the whole world. And he, he didn't say going to deceive. He said deceive the whole world. Mm -hmm. And you can look around and see that he's done that. Got you going to church on the wrong day. Doing all kind of things contrary to this book. Like I said, this is, a spirit, this is spiritual wickedness in high places. And these are the things that we have to understand. The Lord Jesus said, many will come in his name, saying he is the Christ, and shall deceive many. And many of us have been deceived. The church in Revelation 17, that is not the church the Lord loves. The Lord loves the church in Revelation 12. The Lord said, uh, uh, he is not, that church has not only made the kings of the earth drunk, they've made the people drunk as well. People believe in sunrise service, killing trees for December the 25th, Easter Sunday, baptizing babies, a seven-year tribulation. It is obvious to me that the people like being drunk because all you got to do is open your Bible to prove anything that you need to prove. It's right there in your face because they're not reading the books. The preach now, now, this is one thing that always got me. This big preacher, this Gentile preacher, he is always teaching that there's a seven-year tribulation. This John Hagee. I'm glad I hope we record this because I want him if, to watch this because I'm telling you he's lying. And I'm going to prove that he's lying in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So now, he used Daniel the ninth chapter, verses 24 to 27, to prove there is a tribulation. But that is his theory. That is a theory that he's using. These verses is about the people, the Jews, or the Israelites, the holy city, which is Jerusalem, and the Messiah, uh, uh, or the Christ, which is Jesus. Today, me and Brother Jared, uh, we're going to start the lesson by showing you every scripture, every scripture that the tribulation period is only three and a half years. 
The tribulation period in human history is called the hour of temptation or the time of Jacob's trouble. Prepare yourselves. You can see how they fable rattling over there in the Middle East. They are bombing Syria. All this is a part of what's coming down the pipe. We're looking for now this guy, whoever's going to be over the European Union, or he's going to be the, the uh, beast or the military man that this false prophet is going to control. They've already set up, you know, got the cornerstone for the temple that's going to be built that this man of sin is going to take. This thing is coming down the pipe. This is no joke. You find yourself asleep, we're going to end up in the wilderness, and you're going to be still sitting in your living room asleep. And you're going to be trying to dodge either getting your head cut off or somebody putting a mark on your forehead and in your right hand. This is about you, brothers and sisters. This is really about you. Every lesson that you ever got from a brother standing up here, this is about you. This is about your behavior. How we walk, how we talk. So the Lord is not going to make you God if you cannot handle this simple life we in. And it's not easy. This life is not easy. So we're going to start the lesson off in Daniel, the seventh chapter. I'm going to show you seven times. This is for your notes. I'm going to show you seven times that this tribulation period is only three and a half years. We're going we're gonna to start, we, Brother Jared going to start off in Daniel 7 and 25. Because this man on TV is straight lying, and everybody is riding with what this man is saying. Daniel 7. I put this in because I want y'all to have these notes just in case you run into somebody that's going to try to sell you, sell you that theory or that lie. Daniel 7 and 25. Daniel 7. And we're going to start this at verse 25. And this is what he's reading about is this false prophet or this abomination that make it desolate. We got some scripture to cover today and we got some things to point out. One thing that I'd like to point out in this lesson too is the way you prove that this tribulation period is three and a half years is the two witnesses. That's your, that's your focal point. When the, if you watch the two witnesses, they're going to preach the whole 1,260 days. Actually, they're going to preach 1,257 days because they're going to be killed three days before the Lord called, you know, called up the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. You can read that. So now, Daniel 7 and 25, what does it say, brother? And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Uh-huh. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Uh-huh. And think to change times and laws. And he's already done it. He's, saying he's changed times and laws with... Going to church on Sunday, making that, the, making, making that your Sabbath day or your day of rest. Go ahead and read. And they shall be given into his hand until a time. One year. And time. Two, two more years. And a dividing of time. That's six months. That's how you know that this is going to be three and one half years. We're going to read on. Let's go to the 12th chapter of Daniel. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Like I said, these are for your notes. And then we're going to fall into the lesson. We're going to read these again in the lesson, but I just wanted to make sure that you had this. Daniel 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. 12 and verse 7. He's going to say it again. Seven times he said this, and this man is lying to you about there is no seven-year tribulation. He is trying to get you to relax. That is what he's trying to do. Pick it up at uh, verse 7. What does it say? And I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever, uh -huh. that it shall be for a time. One year. Time. Another two years. And then half. Go ahead. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. Hold on a second. He said when he has accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. Some of us that don't, that's got this understanding, some of you brothers, some of you brothers that's out here got some understanding. If you don't get to the wilderness, the Lord is going to allow this man of sin to have it you too. I'm going to read that to you in the lesson. He's going to kill some of us with great understanding. But we, we are the people that if, if we get killed, we're going to be preaching while we're running. We're going to be running and preaching at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
But we, but the book say he's going to let him have at us. He's going to kill us too. But go ahead and read. Did you finish that? No. Nope. Finish it. All these things shall be finished. Yes. Go ahead now. Let's go, let's go to Revelation, the uh, 11th chapter, and verse 2. We're going to read verses 2 and verse 3. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. I'll make sure I repeat the scripture the best I can if I don't blow it like I did last time I was here. I was giving y'all the same scripture over and over, over and over. Revelation 11. And we're going to pick this up at verse uh, 2. Revelation 11 and verse 2. Now we've seen times, times, Brother Jared, and, and the dividing times, didn't mm -hmm. we? So we know that's three and a half years. Yeah. Let's look at another way he's going to say it. Verse 2, 11 and 2. What does it say? But the court which is without the temple, leave out uh -huh. and measure it not. Go ahead. For it is given unto the Gentiles. See, this is the temple that the Edomites are going to build. Now, the Edomites today, they have one hell of an army that we help build. Mm -hmm. They got that iron dome over there where if you shoot a, a, a missile toward them, they can knock it down. They're going to build this temple, but the Lord said it was given to the Gentiles. That's why this man is going to take this temple from them. Start at the top of that verse and read that again for me. But the court, which is without the temple, uh -huh. leave out Go ahead. and measure it not. Uh -huh. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Some of y'all got a card note in here. How long is forty-two months? Three and a half, Three and a half years. years. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> All over the book, the Lord is letting you know this period of time is going to be three and a half years, but it's going to be broken up, and I'm going to show you how we're going to break it up. But now, uh, verse 3. What does verse 3 say? And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Yes. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. One thousand two hundred and sixty days. How many, how many years is that? Three, and a, Three half. and a half years. Okay, finish that. Clothed in sackcloth. Clothed in sackcloth. Let's go into Revelation the twelfth chapter. And we're gonna pick it up at verse six. Revelation twelve and verse six. This is a blessing. When I got to this, when I finally got this in, in the book, I just took a sigh of relief. Because I, I was scared by going out in the wilderness and ain't nothing out there. But the Lord said he prepared this place for you. Exactly. So you know you're going to be safe out there. Mm -hmm. Ain't going to be no Walmarts out there. <laughs> no store to buy. Buy no hair and all of that. <laughs> but it is going to be a place of safety like you wouldn't believe. We're going to pick it up at verse 6. What does it say? And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God. Uh-huh that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Ain't that some one thousand two hundred and three score days. Again, twelve hundred and sixty days. The Lord going to take care of you out there. Let's go into the 14th verse, 12 and 14. What does it say? And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle uh -huh. that she might fly into the wilderness. So the Lord is going to give Israel and who's ever with Israel great power. That is the, that's what the eagle represents. Great power. Go ahead and read. Into her place. Yes. Where she is nursed for a time. Uh-huh. And time. Go ahead. And a half a time. From the from the from place. the face of the serpent. Okay, so now that's six times we read that. Last time, let's go to the 13th chapter. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna pick it up at verse 5. 13 and verse 5. Because a real sweet thing about being a servant of the Lord, getting the truth is. Like I said earlier, he prepared you. You go to Sunday church, you ain't prepared for nothing. A lot of screaming and hollering, a lot of falling out, sliding under chairs and crying and all that. You are not being prepared for what's to come. The Lord told you in the book, he said he set a man as a watchman. And his job was to warn you from God. Prepare you for what is coming. And that is what a watchman's job is. Uh, Revelation 13, and we're going to pick this up at verse Five. Revelation 13 and verse 5. What does it say? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things uh -huh. and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Y'all see what it said? It was given unto him. Uh, it, say, it says, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. See, the Lord is trying to let you know that this man, he is going to get this man power over the earth for this time period. And if you ain't in the place of safety, you in the world, I mean a world of trouble. Let's go to, let's go to Isaiah, the 46th chapter. 
Now, those seven verses was just for you. So you can have that in your arsenal if somebody walk up on you and start crying that seven-year tribulation, uh, uh, crying uh, seven-year tribulation tears to you. <laughs> Isaiah 46. I had a guy, he's trying to sell me that. He tried to sell me that. I just sat there and listened. He cried this seven-year tribulation all the time because he, or something he heard. Once I read this to him, he just got up and walked away. He didn't even say goodbye, nothing. He just got up and just walked out of the room. I said, hold on, man, you brought this conversation up. He just, he just got up and walked out of the room because he knew what 42 months meant. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and see, God deals with a 30-day month system, not 31 not 30, I mean, uh, uh, not 29, he deal with exact 30 days. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is use the 30-day month system, and it'll bring you to the uh, 42 months or the 1,260 days. See, he can prove, Lord can prove, you know, what he's talking about. Right. So now, Isaiah 46 and verse 9. This brother's going to read verses 9 and 10. 46, verses 9 and 10. Isaiah. 46, verses 9 and 10. Everybody got it? Not yet. Huh? Okay. 46, verses 9 and 10. Go ahead and read. Remember the former things of old. See, that's why you need to read your old book. Remember your, your former things of old. See, the Lord used a lot of metaphors in the old book to bring you to Christ. You know the lamb. You know the Lord wasn't talking about taking no lamb. If he had to roast it whole and, and it couldn't have no sin or no blemish. You knew he was talking about Jesus. The bullock. The two goats at the day of atonement. He was always trying to show you that somebody was going to come and die for your sin. Or he had to be a sin offering when you sinned. You always try to find the spiritual aspects of God in your book. But Jesus said, I come in the volume of the book. It was written of me to do thy will, O God. So you find Jesus in the old book, and you walk him right on down to your New Testament. Because it is Jesus that's going to judge you. It is Jesus and them saints, they're going to they judge every man and every woman according to his works. So now, finish that verse. For I am God, and there is none else. Start at the top. Remember the former things of old, uh -huh. for I am God, and there is none else. Go ahead. I am God, and there is none like me. Go ahead. Declaring the end from the beginning. You see what he said? Declaring the end from the beginning. When, when the Lord took down Egypt, he turned the water to blood, didn't he? He turned around, and he dropped hailstones on, where they had to take their uh, livestock and bring them in the house, the ones that be believed. He made it so dark that they had to just sit down where they were. He brought flies on the people and all of that. The first three plagues fell on everybody, but the last seven fell on the Egyptians because he was making a point. When you get in, in, in Revelation, you're going to see the water turn to blood again. You're going to see stuff falling, great stones falling out of the sky, killing the people. But these people that he's going to deal with is those that didn't believe in him and that took the mark of the beast. See, the Lord has a method. He has a method to his madness. He wants you to understand in advance what he's going to do. That's why you go to church. That's why you keep a holy convocation. That's why you get a lesson every time you come to church. Because we are trying to prepare you for what's to come. Finish that, brother. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Notice he said, from ancient times of the things that are not yet come to pass or done. Go ahead and read. My counsel shall stand, uh -huh. and I will do all my pleasure. He said, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasures. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. 2 Corinthians 5. See, when Jesus came and the veil of the temple rent, and he went back to sit at the right hand of God, we are no longer under that Levitical priesthood, even though we are the priests. Even when we go into the land, we are still the priests. But the priests have a different job. The old covenant was ratified with the blood of animals. The new covenant is ratified with the blood of Jesus. And we got a whole different uh, ministry. We're going to pick it up at, uh, we're going to pick this up at verse, uh, verse 17. 
We're going to pick this up at verse 17. What does it say, brother? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, yes. he is a new creature. Uh -huh. Old things are passed away. Ain't that a fact? When you got baptized and you went down in the, in, in the water, you came up something new. That was what you were supposed to have done symbolically, right? Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 5, and he's at verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, and he's at verse 17. Because the Lord lets you know that you are supposed to be a new creature. Not arguing, not bickering. We are on a march to salvation. You ain't got time to be arguing and bickering. Your job is to move this class forward. Yep. You brothers in the class, it is your job to get here and help set up. We had that problem in Chicago. We ain't got that problem no more. Because if the brothers didn't want to help, then they didn't have to be there. They can go be in somebody else's class. We don't have the time. We need brothers to stand up and be men around here. If you can't do that, you're, at the wrong, you're in the wrong class. I'm going to tell you, you're in the wrong class. What verse are you? 17. Go ahead and read. Old things are passed away. Start at the top of that verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh -huh. Old things are passed away. Yes. Behold, all things are become new. Uh -huh. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given uh, to us the ministry of reconciliation. What kind of ministry we got? Ministry of, of reconciliation. reconciliation. You see that? It's, it said, but check it out. It said, all things are of God who has reconciled, recovered us to himself by Jesus Christ. This is God's plan. Jesus just implemented the plan. He came and died for your sins. But it is God's plan, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. Make no mistake about it, this is the Father trying to save you through the Lamb. You don't give the Father no, no credit. I even hear people praying directly to Jesus, and Jesus told you not to do that. You can't get no prayer through like that. He told you to do it. Pray to the Father in my name. Verse 19, what does it say? To wit, that God was in Christ yes. reconciling the world unto himself, uh -huh. not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. One more. Now then, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Be recovered. He's trying to recover you now. Be recovered. Israel, think about it. Israel in the wilderness, they died out there. They, a lot of us died out there. They spoke pure Hebrew. They wore the fringes. They had the frontlets. They died out there. <laughs> You understand? Who wants to die? I don't. <laughs> I did a funeral the other day, and, and the young man that passed away, I've known him for 20 years. Those people in there that I did that eulogy, they had never heard the word of God. They had never heard the Lord's eulogy out of the Bible, because God got a, his own eulogy of what's supposed to be preached uh, uh, at a eulogy. Because the dude that was in this box... He couldn't hear me. They closed the box and locked it. The funeral was for the people out there. It wasn't for this dude. He couldn't hear a word I said because the dead know nothing. Y'all exactly. understand? The funeral is for the living. The Lord told you he was the God of the living dead. Not the dead. There no. you go. So now, they were shocked when I read the book to them. Let's go to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34, we're going to pick it up at verse 16. I'm a vessel here. I'm the lamp that the golden oil flows through. I am trying to uh, reco help recover you to the Father. Jesus set the tone, and we're following, like the books say, in his footsteps. One verse, verse 16. Isaiah 34. And we're going to pick this up at verse 16. And believe me, brothers and sisters, I know this walk is not easy. I know it. And anybody get up here and talk to you like it's easy, they lying to you. Because they having problems. You just, get, you just dust yourself off and get up and you keep walking. You make a mistake. You, you say something you shouldn't have said. You say you're sorry and move forward. 
Don't give up. We had a group called the Sons of Jacob at the class. This, this is one of the best rapping groups that I've ever heard because they use pure Bible to rap. They end up getting caught up worshiping the host of heaven and all of that, changing the days. The Sabbath could be any day. Sabbath could be Tuesday. I don't know how they got caught with that. And they were born in the Word now. From, from babies, they came up in the Word. And they fell short. And, they, and now they go to some Sunday church if they go at all. We went tried to recover them, brothers. They were telling us about how they eat shrimp and pork and cat. I mean, they, they went through that spill. They are servants of Satan. Because the Lord told you not to do that then. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? But these brothers was bad. They was in the word now. Yep. Don't tell me you can't fall away. Because you can fall. But some, if, you, if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, check yourself. Because the Lord will put the block, he'll, he'll put that block on you. And you look up one day, you, you can't even find the class no more. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You're looking for the class. What street was it on? You know, the Lord will put the block on you. Mm-hmm. You understand? And that happens. That, that happens. Let's go to Revelation, the third chapter. Did you, did you re- no, read, read it? it okay, read, read verse 16. Read verse 16. Look what it say. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord yes. and read. What did it say? Seek ye out of the book of the, of of the, the Lord, Lord and, and read. read. See, the Lord, the Lord know where his, where his message is. He know where your salvation lies. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth, for, for my mouth, it hath commanded, and his spirit, it hath gathered them. Ain't that something? Go ahead. Did, that, did you finish that? That's in the sixteen. Let's let's move on. Let's go to um, let's go to Revelation the third chapter, Revelation three. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, brothers and sisters. And read. Ain't that something, something so simple that can get you salvation? All you got to do is read it and do what it say. The only book in the whole Bible where God promised you a blessing is Revelation. He didn't tell you you had to understand everything that's in it because even John the Revelator didn't even understand everything that was in it. He told you that if you read it, I will bless you. That's all. Revelation 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Revelation 3. We're going to pick this up at verse 7. <laughs> Revelation 3, we're going to pick this up at verse 7. This is a warning. This is a warning. If you do this here, the Lord going to do that there for you. This is a warning. We're going to pick it up at verse 7. What does it say? And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write. Uh-huh. These hold on, th- hold on a second. Everybody got it? Everybody got it? Okay. Start at the top of that verse again. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, uh-huh. these things save he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, yes. he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. See, God still has the keys of the kingdom, even though he passed it down to every minister like myself. I have the keys that he gave to Peter. Mm-hmm. Boy, he got the keys. Anybody stand before you got the keys of the kingdom. Because what we're trying to do is get you to see. Continue to read. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, yes. and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word. He said, if you got a little strength, you kept his word, go ahead. And has not denied my name. See, people that always get cut off deny the name of Jesus. Jesus is the only name you can be saved by. Not Yehuda, not Yahweh, not Little Willie, none of that. You must be saved by the name of Jesus. He t- didn't he tell you in uh, the 28th chapter of Matthew, baptize in the name of the Father, Father. Son, and the Holy Ghost? Mm-hmm. Didn't he tell you that? Because the name is the power. The fa- that is the Father's name, brothers and sisters. He told you, I came in my Father's oh, name. Man. Nobody believes that. But he said, well, look what he said. He said, and keep my, he, he said, uh, but thou has a little strength. Thou hast kept my word and not denied my name. Verse 9, what does it say? Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, Uh but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet Uh and to know that I have loved thee. Now, this is what I'm after. Verse 10, what does it say? Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Because you done kept the Lord's word, what does it say? I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. That's what we're talking about. 
We are talking about the great tribulation, which is called the hour of temptation or the time of Jacob's trouble. Continue to read. Which shall come upon all the world yes. to try them that dwell upon the earth. Y'all hear that? It's going to come up all on all the world. We're talking World War III that is going to happen. Peace. We, if you look at the scripture closely, every nation he's talking about is going to be a part of this. He's going to bring them down to the valley of Megiddo, and he's going to kill every man that comes down in that valley. Mm -hmm. No flesh will be saved in that valley. Because this, the Lord knows that the only way, if you got gang, I mean, if you got gangrene in your foot and in your ankle, the only way to cure you is cut your leg off. off at the knee. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to kill all these men, and he's going to take this earth by force. This is what he's going to do. Because this white man will not relinquish. Even some of the Isra Israelite politicians will not relinquish. So the Lord is going to you know what he's going to do? He's going to cut them off at the knee. And that's what he's going to do. Did you finish that? Yep. Read that 10th verse again for me. <coughs> it says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, uh -huh. which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Ain't that something? To try you that dwell upon the earth. Because the Lord, the Lord knows Satan and got in here, and he, and he done infiltrated us. And the Lord drew a line in the sand. If you're on this side, the Lord, you belong to Satan. If you're on this side, you belong to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You can't say, well, I'm not really sure what side I want to be on the straddle of the fist. You do that, he's going he to put you over there on Satan's side. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to know your God. You're supposed to know the ability that he has to save you in the time appointed. We're going to go to, we gonna go to uh, uh, Matthew, Matthew the 24th chapter, Matthew 24. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. See, all this is playing out. But we so busy, we in love with, with the Levitical priesthood, we done forgot what the job is. Oh, I'm the priest. You walking around, you know, preacher come, preacher go to your house. Nowadays, he go to your house, and, and he sit down at the table, and your wife give him his meal first. What kind of crap is that? No, nigga, you don't get your meal first. I get it first. I'm the head of the house. Or my kids. You don't get, that's how it used to be. Y'all, 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 old time, y'all know what time it is. In the Sunday church, in the Sunday church, they used to give the preacher the food first. That's what they did. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. He was so highly exalted that he, he, he for everybody in the house. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how, that's why Jesus in, in, uh, in the 23rd chapter of Matthew, he called them hypocrites and all of that. He told them, he told them about washing a, you know, you wash the outside of the cup, but you don't wash the inside. You see what I'm saying? So this is, this is what the Lord is warning you about. Let's pick it up at verse 3. 3 through 5 first, and then we're going to skip to verse 11. Matthew 24, because I hate that. My brother-in-law was a preacher. I tried to talk to him. He would not listen. He used to ridicule us. Because we were reading the Bible. I mean, he would literally ridicule us. Hmm. I told him, you better be right. Hmm. Because he's dead now. So when you wake up, you understand before the Lord and explain that 12, 14 foot Christmas tree you had in your living room. Because he had the biggest Christmas tree, man, I've ever seen hmm. in my life. <laughs> so and he was, he was like, he liked people to worship him rather than worship the Lord, mm -hmm. he better be right when he wake up. Matthew 24 and 3, what does it say? And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, What did he say? Tell us, when shall these things be? Uh -huh. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Ain't that something? Take heed that no man deceive you. Mm -hmm. Finish that. For many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Ain't that something? Don't, first thing out of his mouth, they asked him, Lord, tell us when these things be, what is the sign of thy coming and the end of the world. First thing he said, don't let no man deceive you. Ain't it? Yes, first thing he said, because he knew they were going to come in his name and try to deceive, deceive the people. Verse 11, what does it say? And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Uh-huh. 
and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Uh -huh. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Y'all see what I'm saying? Enduring to the end, not right now. That's another big lie. Oh, I'm saved already. Mm -hmm. You know, God told me I'm, I got saved in 1972. <laughs> I said, saved from what? <laughs> saved me out of danger. How are you out of danger? You're not out of danger, brother. Mm. He said, yeah, I, you know, you just don't know, man. You just ain't got that spirit and all that. I sure, I sure don't. I sure don't. I don't have that. Right. Uh, what verse was that? That was the end of 13. Continue to read. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world okay, for a witness. Okay, here we go. The gospel, gospel of the kingdom shall be preached for a witness. Go ahead. Unto all nations. Yes. And then shall the end come. Notice again that all nations. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be a world war. Everybody is picking a side. Mm -hmm. United States allies is on their side. You know, then Russia and China, their allies is on their side. Everybody's picking a side. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Yes. Staying in the holy place. Uh-huh. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Go ahead, brother. Let them w which be in Judea flee into the mountain. He says, so when you see this. Understand and do what? Flee. Ain't that what we just read? Mm -hmm. Read that Read that 16th verse again. Go ahead and read. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Go ahead. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Brother Andre on top of the house putting in the shingle. Just go down. He hear on the radio, on TV that the abomination then went in the temple. He don't go down. Don't get down and go in your house and get nothing. Flee. It's time to go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I know brothers right now, they got a, what they call a <laughs> tribulation package in their car. Jeez. So once they, once it happens, they ain't got to go home. They got their whole, their whole set of, I don't even know what that is. Mm -hmm. The whole, I, I don't even know what's in it. A you know, bug out bag. The whole, you know, we probably got a tin in there, mm -hmm. you know, you know, some old water you know, had since 72, you know, <laughs> all that's in that bag. You know what I mean? And I thought about it, you know, I, I thought about getting that bag too, mm -hmm. but, uh, so, so it said, don't come down now. Uh -huh. It said, let him that's on the house uh, uh, not come down and take anything out of the house. Verse 18, go ahead. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Yes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Now you pregnant or you, you just had a little arm, baby. He said, woe to you because without the mark of the beast, you can't get no medicine. You got to have that mark on your forehead or in your right hand. So woe unto you. Go ahead and read. But pray ye <coughs> that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Go ahead. For then shall, shall be great tribulation. He said, for then shall be great tribulation. How terrible is it? Go ahead. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Ain't that something? Like from the beginning of this world and now forever shall be. This is going to be a time, I mean, this is going to be a time that's unimaginable. They're going to be blowing the, your children's brains out. They're going to be killing your daughters and your wives and all that just to get you mm. to take this mark. See, they can't throw you down and just put it on you because that's cheating. You see, <laughs> you, you got to take it. You got to take the mark. So now let's move on. Let's go to um, let's go to Ezekiel right quick, the 33rd chapter. Let me show you something. Ezekiel 33, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. He said, a time of trouble like no other time. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? That came out of Daniel. So we're going to read that. But I want to show you something that the Lord put in the uh, Bible for your edification about Brother Bowie, about Brother Jeremiah, about myself, about any brother that comes stand here in front of you. Mm -hmm. We're going to pick it up at verse 1 because the Lord is bringing a sword on the land. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. That's why every class have its own uh, uh, local preacher, a local pastor. Because we need guidance. We are recovering the people. Ezekiel 33. Now this is something the Lord had written. Go ahead and read, brother. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh -huh. Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon the land. Hold on a second now. He say, when I bring the sword, exactly. didn't he? He didn't say, when, when the Gentile bring the sword. Nope. He didn't say, 
When the Hamite bring the sword, did he? He said, when I bring the sword on the land. Go ahead and read. If the people of the land take a man of their coast uh -huh. and set him for their watchman. Their preacher, go ahead. If when he see the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Go ahead. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning. Notice what he said. You hear the sound of the trumpet and you refuse to take there the warning. Go, go ahead and read. If the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. You see what I'm saying? See, you see how the Lord put it in your court? He give you a man to tell you about it, but if you blow the mission, you die. This is what he's saying. Go ahead and read some more. Verse 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet. Yes, he did. And took not warning. Uh-huh. His blood shall be upon him. Uh-huh. But he that taketh warning shall deliver, deliver his soul. Ain't that something? You take the warning. You follow what the Lord say. You're going to deliver your soul. Don't be part of no clique. Don't let nobody walk you down and get you cut off. Because you know what they're going to do? They're going to they gonna slip, they slip behind you when you ain't looking, and they're going to go in the closet, and they're going to go to prayer, Lord, 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 save mm -hmm. me. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you out there in the wind all by yourself. There you go. You serve God. Your <laughs> salvation should be as valuable to you as your children or your money. Mm -hmm. Protect your salvation. Yep. Anybody in Chicago or anywhere can tell you about me, this is my salvation. I do not hinge my salvation on nobody, mm -hmm. not even my senior pastor, because this is mine. Brother Bowie and Brother Jeremiah, they're not going into the fire for me. <laughs> I'm cool with them, but they're not going to go in the fire for me. That's it. You understand? Yep. Boy said all the time, I'm not going in the fire for y'all. <laughs> you understand? All Don't he say time. that? He say it all, all the time. time. Mm -hmm. So this is mine. Protect what's yours. Yep. Serve God with fear and trembling. What yep. verse are you? Verse 6. Go ahead and read it. But if the watchman see the sword come. Now I see the sword come just like this tribulation. I see it. Go ahead. <laughs> And blow not the trumpet. And I don't warn you about it. Go ahead. And the people be not warned. Go ahead. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. Yeah, and his sin. Go ahead. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Go ahead. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Go ahead. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at, at my, my mouth, mouth uh -huh. and warn them from me. See, because it's the Lord bringing his own. I'm going to show you this army, this great army that's going to come across the Euphrates. That's God's army, mm -hmm. even though they atheists. Exactly. The Lord, the Lord hate that man so much that he's going to bring these atheist nations across the Euphrates to try to kill this man. That's it. Ain't that something? The holiest man on the planet, the Lord is going to sin. And he, and he come to you in the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. wearing that long dress. White. And then he got, that, he got that big old cross. He dragging Jesus down, you know, he dragging him on down the aisle, you know what I mean? Because he said, we Romans, we killed him. Mm -hmm. I, I am, his title is the Ficarious Philly Day. That uh -huh. means he is the vicar or the replacement for Christ. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't, y'all, y'all don't speak no Latin, so y'all don't know that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Gotta but this dude, he, even the Gentiles that follow him religiously, they don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. The vicar. He is the replace. He said, I replaced him. I set policy. I, I changed times and laws. Mm -hmm. Didn't we read that? Y'all understand? We have been corn swaddled, sisters and brothers. You <laughs> brothers are, what'd you say, man? Yeah, corn swaddled. I, I get that from Mississippi, you see? <laughs> so, so, so now, because my people are from Mississippi. So, so now, we have went to the wrong churches, getting the wrong things. You people are most blessed in this congregation. Peace. In Chicago, Baton Rouge, everywhere we got a class because we are recovering you to God. Let's give the Lord a clap right there. All right? That's how I feel in my gut. We are being recovered by the Lord. So now, okay, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. So now, let's move on. Let's go to Daniel, the 12th chapter, Daniel 12. Because see, sometimes I feel good about what the Lord has done for us, you know. And it's all right to say, you know, to praise him and all that. But we ain't going to get crazy like the Sunday churches do. Mm -hmm. We just give them a little bit, and then that's it. Okay? <laughs> that's a little bit. He, he know our hearts, don't he? Mm -hmm. You know, he know the hearts of men. So now, we're going to go Daniel 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 
Daniel 12, we're going to pick it up at verse 1, and then we're going to skip to verse 5, and then you're going to read 5 through 7. Daniel 12. Now, this is real important. This is important to me. You know, this is important. It should be important to you. Daniel 12. Now, we read that the tribulation period is a rough time that's going to come. Yep. This is where Matthew got it from, right here. Go ahead and read verse 1. Daniel 12 and verse 1. What does it say? And at that time shall Michael stand up. Yes. The great prince will stand for the children of thy people. Go ahead. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that is found written in the book. Y'all see that? Even he said it was going to be a time of trouble. Hmm. Like no other time in human history. Skip down to verse, uh, five. verse 5 and continue. What does it say? Then I, Daniel, looked. And behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and, and the other on, this, on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man, clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? Go ahead. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, uh -huh. times, and in half. Go ahead. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of thy holy people, uh -huh. of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So all these things shall be finished. It's going to be a lot. You're going to see, it's going to be a lot of people that's going to die during that tribulation period. The book talks about, it's going, the blood is going to be 500, it's going to be five feet high up to the horse's bridle, and it's going to run 200 miles. That's a lot of blood, ain't it? Now, check this out. Human history actually happened. In 1918, the Spanish influenza started. It started in March of 1918. It was responsible for the death of 20 million to 40 million people in Asia, Europe, and North America. The Great Tribulation is going to kill more than that. The Black Death, 1348, it swept through Europe from 1348 to 1351. It was estimated that 25 to 60 percent of the European population died. That's between 75 to 200 million people died in the Middle Ages. The Great Tribulation is going to be worse than that. If you don't get to the wilderness, you are hamburger meat. The Lord is going to allow him to kill you. Y'all understand? And to get there, your behavior got to be tight. Mm -hmm. World War II, over 60 million people died. Vietnam War, it estimated the death toll was between 1.3 million and 3.9 million people died. The Great Tribulation period, since it's a world war, it's going to be more than that that's going to be killed. That's why the man, that's why they both said, the time of trouble is like no other time that man has ever dealt with. So now, let's move on. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Jeremiah the 30th chapter. Jeremiah 30. This is the preliminary we're dealing with right now. Jeremiah 30. I'm just trying to get you to understand how we need to all get our game together so we can be ready to go. When it's time to go, skip that furniture. I know some of y'all got beautiful homes, you know, five cars in the driveway, you know, Mercedes Benz, BMW. You're going to have to forget that because you ain't going to be able to take that with you. Your bank accounts and all that. The Lord is dealing with you by faith. That's why in the Passover, he had told you to put the blood on the doorpost and the lintel. This was by faith. He was instituting faith in you. You didn't put the blood on your doorpost or your lint house, guess what happened? Your firstborn, whether it was you or whether it was somebody else in your family, your firstborn died. The Lord was instituting faith by the blood. And you got you to gotta believe that because the blood of Jesus is covering you right now. Jeremiah 30 and verse 5. Jeremiah 30 and verse 5. Look what the Lord had written. 30 and 5. Go ahead and read. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a <coughs> voice of trembling, of fear and not of peace. Yes. Ask ye now and see whether a man does travail with child. Uh -huh. Does a man have a baby? Does he travail with child? Go ahead and read. 
Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins uh -huh. as a woman in travail? It's going to be so rough that it's going to look like a man is having a baby. Mm. He gonna have, and you women know how painful that is. When I was at a hospital visiting somebody. I heard all this hollering. Ah, ah, he killing me. He killing, ah, you know, I heard all that hollering. <laughs> I go back in the side room. The woman, the, the woman was in labor. She was hollering like somebody was killing her. Now, can you imagine you brothers have that same type of pain? Because I know you sisters, you know that brother can't handle that. I, and I believe you can't handle that, brother. <laughs> I believe that. The way the sisters be hollering and carrying on, and then she be cussing and, uh, and, uh, and carrying on. No, we can't handle that. The world is so crazy now. The, the Gentiles is talking about putting a baby inside of a dude. That's going to be, that baby going to bust him wide open. You understand? That's the worst thing a man could do. You know what I mean? This, this evil that's in the world today. But anyway, what verse are you? Uh, in the six. Go ahead. And all faces are turned into paleness. Yes. Alas, for that day is great. Yes. So that none is like it. Uh-huh. It is even. He said, look what he said. He said, ain't nothing like this time. Go ahead and read. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Yes. For he shall be saved out of it. Yes. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, but he's going to be saved out of it. How long is the great tribulation period, y'all? Three and a half. Three, hundred, three and a half years or 1,260 days. So now he just told you. And he shall be saved. It's even the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, let's go to Amos, the fifth chapter. Amos, the fifth chapter. Because the Lord is trying to give you an idea how terrible this time is going to be. Amos 5. You're going to turn around, something else is going to be on you. You're going to get past that, and something else is going to be at you. It's going to be like that. If you don't get to that wilderness, man, it is going to be, it is going to be a terrible, terrible thing. We're going to start at verse 18. He's going to tell you about how dark and gloomy this time period is going to be. And brothers out here worrying about wearing some, wearing some daggone fringes. Skip a fringe. I might trip over that thing on the one while I'm running. You understand? If you can't remember to keep the commandments of God, what is wrong with you? I got to look at my clothes to remind me to do something that I know I should do? It don't make any sense. But it made sense under the old covenant because God was trying to remind Israel, look, I didn't did everything I could. I didn't gave you the law from Mount Sinai. I didn't did everything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these frontlets on, on you. I'm going to have you wear this. Or I'm going to put the fringes on your clothes. It was good for that time. But it's not good for this time because he told you he's going to write the laws in your heart and your mind. He do that every time you come to class. He do that every time you keep the feast. The Lord was trying, he's always trying to save Israel. Always trying to save us as a people. Um, where are we at? Amos 5, we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Amos 5, we're going to pick this up at 18. Check this out, y'all. Verse 18, what does it say? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness. And not light. You, you see what he said? You know how some people, sometimes you be at home, your grandma, my grandmama, my mama used to say, you know, boy, I sure, I sure be glad when the Lord get back here. Yeah. I sure, you know, because she's looking at all the killing and all the stuff in the neighborhoods and all that. But he said, don't do that because this is going to be a terrible time. This is going to be a time of darkness. Once he comes, he, he, you can't stop it. So he said, don't do that. Go ahead and read. He said, woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Verse 19. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. Ain't that something? You running for a lion and you look up, you to run into a bear, a grizzly bear. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall. Now he done ran and got away from the grizzly and then you at home, you hovered and puff, you got your hand on the wall. Uh, uh, and what happened? And a serpent bit him. And a snake bit your hand. It's going to be like that. Every time you turn the corner, it's going to be something. Some soldier is trying to get you to take the mark. You done got away from him. Then your cousin, that uh, your cousin that just took the mark, now he telling on you. Exactly. Hey, hey, go Jared right mm -hmm. there. He ain't got the mark. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. You know what I'm saying? Big snitching going on. I mean, it's go. I'm telling y'all, it's gonna be some serious snitching going on during that time. You understand? They're gonna be tell because you know they got it. You know, they go, I want my cousin to get the mark too. You know, Jared is down in the basement behind the furnace. He he down. He, the soldier's in the house. He down, he down in the basement behind the furnace. 
they will go down there and get him too. That's, you understand? Know this is how it happened. You flee from a lion, you ran into a bear. You got away from the bear, you leaned on the wall, and the snake bit you. Go ahead and read. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness uh -huh. and not light? Ain't the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Go ahead. Even very dark and no brightness in it. Ain't that something? It's going to be a terrible time. That's what he let you know. That's why we got to stay tight. We got to stay together. And when it's time to go, we got to flee together. Revelation, the second chapter. Revelation 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 8. Revelation 2. We're going to pick this up at verse 8. Revelation 2 and verse 8. This is, this is urgent, but the thing I want to try to uh, uh, kind of uh, convey to you is that we got to stay together. We got to walk. We got to walk together. Our, our behavior got to be tight. You move to Europe, you still got to walk the same way. You still under the Lord's sky. You move to Africa, you still under his sky. You move to Mississippi, you still under his sky. You understand? You still got to walk right. Revelation 2 and verse, in verse 8. Revelation 2. I don't know if I want to read that again. Yeah, Revelation 2 and verse 8. 2 and 8. Now, this is who's going to build the temple. 2 and 8. Go ahead and read. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, uh -huh. which was dead and is alive. Go ahead. I know thy works and tribulation. And poverty, but thou art rich. See, this, these are the people that's going to build the temple. Go ahead and read. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they, they are, are Jews. Jews. They saying they you. Go ahead. And are not. Uh-huh. But are the synagogue of Satan. Ain't that something? He said, but they are of the synagogue of Satan. Go ahead and finish that. That's the end of verse 9. That's good. Okay, so now let's move on. Let's go to uh, Revelation 11 chapter. Revelation 11. Because this temple has to be built. And that's why Edom is over there talking about building this temple. They have stole your name. They stole your land. Now they're trying to steal your God. But it ain't going to happen. <coughs> I talked to a guy some years ago. He approached me. He said, you know you Israel? I said, it was an Edomite. He said, you know you Israel? I said, yeah, I do. He said, you speak Hebrew? I said, no. He said, can you want me to teach you Hebrew? I said, well, I said, well, do you know Hebrew? He said, well, I speak a form of Hebrew. I said, well, what, what's that? He said, Yiddish. Mm -hmm. You know, it's part of the Romance languages, and, and it's a part of some small, small, small part of what they call Hebrew. That's Yiddish what they talk. I said, no, no, thank you. I'm, I'm going to take my chances with this English I speak. <laughs> I'm going to take my chances. Because my book is in English. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Now, my book was, was half Hebrew and half English, then I would roll with that. Yep, yep, Some yep. people are buying mm -hmm. books like that. Exactly. They don't do them no good because the bottom line is obey the Lord. That's the bottom line. And you can go back and you read in the scriptures. The Lord wanted Israel. He got out of Israel. He wanted Israel so bad, he wanted, to, he wanted to punish Israel. He had Satan go and make David number the people. David knew he wasn't supposed to do that, but Satan put the whammy on him. He numbered the people, and then God went at Israel. Didn't go at David, went at Israel. So it's all about your behavior. Your behavior is wrong, you're going to be in a world of trouble. He, uh, uh, Revelation 11, and uh, what verse are you now? Uh, verse 1. Read it. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God uh -huh. and the altar and them that worship therein. Go ahead. But the court which is without the temple leave out uh -huh. and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And the holy city that they tread underfoot forty and two months. Now, what comes with the temple? Animal sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So put that in your notes. The animal sacrifices, the, while they're building it, the animal sacrifice is going to come. And they're going to start sacrificing animals. Yeah. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go to Daniel the 8th chapter. Daniel 8. If they could today, they would be Ooh, sacrificing animals. That's right. Daniel 8, we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Daniel 8 and verse 9. Always about this man of sin. The abomination that make it desolate. 
Daniel 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Here he's called, other places he's called a little horn. Mm -hmm. But he's blaspheming God, and he's just like his daddy Satan. He is always magnifying himself. Mm -hmm. Daniel 8 and 9. 8 and 9, what does it say? And out of one of them came forth a little horn, yes. which waxed his seating grape toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. Go ahead. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. Uh-huh. And it cast down some of the host and some of the end of the stars to the ground. See, he blasphemed God. Mm -hmm. He couldn't reach up there and mess with the host of heaven. He was blaspheming the Lord. Go ahead and read. And stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince, prince of, of the host. host. Go ahead. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken, taken away. away. See, he's trying to be like Jesus now. Mm -hmm. See, when Jesus died and the development of triple rent, it, it killed animal sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Now we un that brought us under the new covenant. So when this man come, Edom going to do the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. This man going to come on the set, and he is going to stop it. He's going to make the people think he's Jesus. Mm -hmm. Y'all see what I'm saying? And he's going to stop it. Continue to read. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Uh-huh. And then host was given him against the daily sacrifice but by reason of transgression. Uh-huh. And it cast by down. By reason of sin. You exactly. see that? Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. And it cast down the truth to the ground. And it practiced and prospered. Ain't that something? This man is something else. Let's go to Daniel the 11th chapter. Daniel 11. And we're going to pick it up. And we're going to read one verse, verse 31. Because this man is serious here. He's going to take this temple by force. You would think Edom would be able to guard themselves against this dude. That's why the Lord say it was given to the Gentile. Amen. This man is a Gentile. Amen. He's going to take it. The Lord is going to allow him to take it. We're going to pick it up at verse 31. Daniel chapter uh, 11 and verse 31. Daniel 11 and verse 31. 11 and 31. Go ahead and read. An arm shall stand on his part. Yes. And they shall pollute. That's an army. Mm -hmm. An army going to stand on his part, just like what we read. Go ahead and read. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. Uh-huh. And shall take away the daily sacrifice. Go ahead. And they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. See, they're going to stop the daily sacrifice. And then they're going to place him on the throne in that temple. Let's go to Daniel, um, Daniel 12. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Daniel 12. We're going to look at it again. Because the Lord put stuff in here two, three times. We're going to look at it again. Daniel, chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 11. 12 and 11. You should, be, you should be there. Go ahead and read. And from the time that the daily sacrifice right, shall, go ahead. shall be taken, taken away, away. Uh -huh. and the abomination that maketh desolate set up. See, this is what I was trying to show somebody. Instead of 1,260 days, mm -hmm. now he added an additional 30 days. Yep. Now read the top of that verse again for me, please. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, uh -huh. and the abomination that makes it desolate uh, set up, go ahead. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. See, it looks like to me it's going to take him thirty days mm -hmm. to take this temple yeah. from these people. So he see that's why he added an additional thirty days. Now let's move on. Let's go to Second Thessalonians in the uh, second chapter and just read about this abomination. Second Thessalonians. The second chapter. We are in the heat of the great tribulation right now, according to the lesson. Verse 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And see, as I'm doing a lesson, I'm giving you the timeline. I'm giving it to you. The animal sacrifice, the, the, the abom I mean, the, uh, the man going to take the temple. We got to run. We got to go to the wilderness and all that. I'm giving you the timeline as we go. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Chapter 2, verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. What does it say? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, uh -huh. that ye be not soon shaken in mind go ahead. or troubled, or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that as that the day of the Christ is at hand go ahead let no man deceive you he Paul said the same thing Jesus said mm -hmm. and the Lord said don't let no man fool you why because he told you to, to pick up your Bible and read it he said don't let nobody deceive you go ahead mm -hmm. and read by any means uh-huh for that day 
shall not come except there come a falling away first. Uh huh. And that man of sin shall uh, be revealed, the son of perdition. The son of destruction. Mm -hmm. So lest he be revealed, and he's already been revealed. We just don't know exactly who he is. Exactly. Go ahead and read verse 4. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, Go ahead. or that is worshipped, uh -huh. so that he, as God, God uh -huh. sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. See, once they put him in there, he's going to start exalting himself. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is going to allow this man to have witchcraft and deal with witchcraft among the people. Mm -hmm. That's the only way he can get a stone statue to stand up and walk and talk. Mm -hmm. Because he's going to be using witchcraft, and he's going to fool a lot of people. Skip down to verse 9 and continue. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Ain't that something? Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew, back to Matthew 24. Because Jesus warned you about this guy. Matthew 24. He said, they talk about this dude. He's over here. Don't believe it. Matthew 24, and we're going to pick it up at verse 25. Matthew 24, and we're going to pick this up at verse 25. Because Jesus warned you about this guy. They're going to be saying, ooh, Jesus is back. He's sitting in the temple in the holy place. Mm -hmm. That ain't Jesus in the holy place. Because when Jesus comes, everybody's going to see him come. We're going to pick it up at verse 25. Verse 25, what does it say? Behold, I have told you before. Yes. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Go not forth. Go ahead. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe, Believe it, it not. not. Uh -huh. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. See, he letting you know it ain't going to be no secret coming when he comes. Mm -hmm. And when I come, the whole world going to see me come. Let's go to Revelation, the first chapter. Mm -hmm. Revelation 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. We're moving right along. Revelation 1 and verse 7. One and seven. He's going to read seven and eight for those that's taking notes. Revelation seven and eight for those that's taking notes. Now this is the church. Revelation, Revelation, what did I, what did I say? Chapter one, seven and eight. Go ahead and read. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him. Uh -huh. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even, Even so, so, amen. Go ahead. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which which was and which is to come, uh -huh. the Almighty. All right. So now, it which is and which was, he was God in the beginning. He came in the flesh, and now he is back at the right hand of God, and he is also called the Almighty. Mm -hmm. I can read that to you that he lived forever later on in Daniel, if anybody want to see that, because he's called the Ancient of Days as well. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what the, we all blew in the beginning. Jesus is the God of Israel. That's why he said no other, he, you, you had up no other man. Mm -hmm. Man has never known no other God but him, but he reports to the Father. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They got this hierarchy that's going on. Revelation 12, Revelation 12 and verse 1. Revelation 12, now this is the church that God loved we're going to read about. This is the church that God loved we're going to read about. Revelation 12 and verse 1. This is his church. Revelation 17, that's that great whore that sits over yeah. many waters. That has polluted the whole world with her lies and all of that. She came looking real pretty. <laughs> she got that scarlet on and she had that gold cup in her hand. Mm -hmm. And she had been feeding you out of that gold cup the whole time. Christmas in the cup. Easter in the cup. Baptizing a newborn baby is in the cup, what they call christening now. Yeah. <laughs> How are you gonna baptize a child, a baby? Baby don't know, don't know anything. We we have to take care of the child. We have to feed the child. Mm -hmm. Baby can't do nothing for itself. But then you out there baptize you you doing some some uh, gathering with all your relatives, mm -hmm. and then you sprinkle the head. You don't even you know if you dump the baby, you might drown the baby. You understand? Some do. But it's just crazy the, what was in that cup. Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, what does it say? And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet 
and upon her head a crown of twelve, 12 stars. stars. Go ahead. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Uh huh. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. That's good. Skip down to verse five and continue. And she brought forth a man child. Now this woman brought this. This is Israel, mm. and she brought forth a man child. Go ahead and read. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron? How many nations? All, all nations. All nations. When he come back, go ahead and read. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Go ahead. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God that they should feed her, uh, feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Verse 14, what does it say? And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place uh -huh. where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time uh -huh. from the face of the serpent. And that song so she's going to have to fly into the wilderness because Satan is going to be tracking us now. Mm -hmm. He's going to try to stop you. Mm -hmm. Now, what wilderness are we trying to get to? Let's go to Isaiah 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Mm -hmm. What wilderness are we trying to get to? Mm -hmm. Now, there's two, a lot of people get it mixed up. Uh -huh. There's two different time periods where you go to the wilderness. The first time, we're going to run, we're going to flee to the wilderness. Mm -hmm. The second time, once Jesus come back, take down the nations, then he going to gather, he going to force the Gentile stranger to bring you to the wilderness. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. Because brother, even teachers get that mixed up. Exactly. We are looking at the flee into the wilderness right now. But in Ezekiel 20, he going to bring everybody to the wilderness that didn't get their change. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus have to preach to you Another, mm -hmm. how long? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. Y'all follow me? Mm -hmm. Y'all right. got it? Because he was supposed to preach seven years when he came. Mm -hmm. yep. so, so he only killed him in the middle of that week. Yep. So he's got a three and a half years to go. Yep. So now, Isaiah 16 and verse 1. Isaiah 16 and 1. This is where we're going. Isaiah 16 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Send ye the lambs to the ruler of the land, from Selah to the wilderness. Now, now that right there, that first verse, once I get it, that first verse, that is a twofold prophecy. Send you the lamb to the wilderness. When we flee to the wilderness, Jesus ain't coming to the wilderness then. Exactly. So that's talking about the second time when all Israel, all over the world, is taken to the wilderness, and the lamb, he's going to go to the wilderness to teach. Y'all exactly. understand? Exactly. That is really important. Send ye the lamb to the wilderness. The lamb is not coming to the wilderness when we flee there. Exactly. Because we're going to be there three and a half years if we're so blessed. We're going to be there. So now, uh, what verse are you? Uh, still on one. Go ahead and read it. Unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. Now, go ahead and read. For it shall be that as a wandering bird cast out of the nest, yes. so the daughters of Moab shall be the fords of Ornon. Oh, nah. Go ahead and read. Take counsel. Execute judgment. Make thy shadow as the night in the midst of the noonday. Noon Go ahead. Hide the outcast. Beray not him that wandereth. Go ahead and read, brother. Let mine outcast dwell with thee, Moab. Now look, if you get a chance and you're not doing nothing on your own, when you go read about the exodus out of Egypt, mm -hmm. when they get to the land, you're going to run right into Moab. Yep. Because Moab is where the arm of Satan cannot reach. Nope. And I can read that to you. Mm -hmm. He cannot reach you there. So that's why the Lord put going to put us there. Mm -hmm. Continue to read. Be thou a covert yes. to them from the face of the spoiler. He said, be a covert to them, Moab. Moab, hide them that's out there in that wilderness. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. For the extortioner is at an, is at an end. Uh-huh. The spoiler ceases. Yes. The oppressors are consumed out of the land. Ain't that something? So the Lord is letting you know we're going to be under the protection of Moab. Who is Moab today? You should ask yourself. Mm -hmm. It's Jordan. This is where those kings are. Mm -hmm. They're going to protect us out there if we are so blessed to get there. So now, let's move on. Let's go to Isaiah 35. And let's look at this. Let's look at some more on this wilderness here. And you ain't got to worry. You get out there, so you got your pocketbook on your arm, you lay it down, ain't nobody going to touch your pocketbook. <laughs> Brother, drop his wallet on the ground. If don't nobody pick it up and give it to him, it's going to be there for three and a half years. Because you ain't, you're going to be too scared to touch anything. Mm. Five people going to be fighting over the wallet to give it back to you. You understand? Because <laughs> ain't no fool going to be there. You ain't going to error there. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 35 and 1. What does it say? 
the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, mm -hmm. and the desert shall rejoice Go ahead. and blossom as the rose. Uh huh. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto Pay it. Pay attention to what you're reading. The wilderness going to blossom. Exactly. Water, fresh water, reeds, rushes. Brother Andre always talking about, you know, you're going to have a grape so big that it's going to take two people to carry the branch. Mm -hmm. A grape's like bowling balls going to be on there. Mm -hmm. Fresh grapes. Go ahead and read. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord. Yes. And the excellency of our God. Go ahead. Strengthen ye the weak knees and confirm the feeble knees. Go ahead. The weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Because some of us going to be a little fearful. Mm -hmm. You done left everything you got. And you're going to have to walk out there on faith. Yep. So we say we're going to strengthen them. Mm -hmm. He says, strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even uh, God with the recompense. Uh -huh. He will come and save you. Go back to the fourth verse. Read that. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, yes. be strong, uh -huh. fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save, save you. you. Go ahead and read. Then the, uh, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness Sh shall waters, waters break, break out, out Go ahead. and streams in the desert. Read on, brother. And, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the, thirsty, and the thirsty land springs of water, and the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be, shall be grass with reeds and rushes, uh -huh. and then the highway shall be there. This highway is going to be a holy place. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. Uh -huh. The unclean shall not pass over. See, ain't no sinner going to come out there. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. why I said that about your wallet mm -hmm. or your purse and your wife. Nobody ain't going to be out there trying to scope your wife out mm -hmm. and all of that. <laughs> because if you do, the angel going to fall on you and kill you dead right out there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. Uh-huh. Ain't mm -hmm. no fool going to be out there. What, mm -hmm. One more. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. One more. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion. That's with, Jesus. He going to come to Zion. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. With songs and everlasting joy upon their heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Let's go to Psalms 91. Psalms mm -hmm. 91. Back up. Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Psalms 91, we're going to pick it up at verse 1, and then we're going to skip. Because it's called a secret place. Mm -hmm. It's called a secret place. See, you know why it's a secret? Because mm -hmm. don't nobody know nothing about it. Nope. You're so busy jumping and shouting and screaming and buying the pastor a new car and all that, you don't know nothing about this. Going to church on the wrong day, painting these eggs and all that. You're so busy, you miss this part of the, of the lesson. Because what we're doing on the Sabbath day is a time of preparation. We are preparing for this time to come. That's, that's what the Sabbath is all about. It's a day of rest, but we are preparing for what's coming. Verse 1, what does it say? He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High uh -huh. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So who you going to protect? Who going to protect you out there? The Lord. The Most High. The Lord going to protect you out there. Skip down to verse 3 and continue. What does it say? Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Yes. And from the noisome pestilence. Go ahead. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. Go ahead. His truth shall be, be thy, thy shield and, and buckler. buckler. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. No, nor for the arrow that flies by, by day. day. See, they're going to be fighting. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to come near you. Exactly. We're going to be able to see this. I don't know. And I always wonder, is the Lord going to put the big video screen <laughs> up there and we're going to see what's going on in the nation? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But go ahead and read. What else is it say? Verse 6. No, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, uh -huh. nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. noonday. Go ahead. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, uh -huh. but it shall not come nigh thee. See that what I'm saying? You're going to see all this happening, but it ain't going to come near you. Go ahead and read. Only with thine eyes 
shalt thou behold and see the reward Lord of the, of the wicked. wicked. Go ahead. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Ain't that something? You're going to make the Lord your refuge. You done already put yourself under his wing. Mm -hmm. He's already decided he's going to deal with you. Mm -hmm. He's going to save you. Mm -hmm. Daniel the 8th chapter. Daniel the 8th chapter. Now in the old book, let's look at the same man of sin. Daniel the 8th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Daniel 8 and verse 23. All this, like I said, is about preparation. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. We read that the Lord is preparing you. He called the end from the beginning. Mm -hmm. He is trying to save you. Well, maybe some people just don't want to be saved. huh? <laughs> maybe. I can see that. I can see that. Some people just don't want to be saved. I always wondered why did Aaron, after they come out of the wilderness, why did Aaron make a gold calf? Can somebody tell me that at the class? Why did that brother make a gold calf? And the first thing the Lord told you to have no other God before me. He told you these are the gods that brought you out of, out of Egypt. He knew he was lying. You understand? That's why Moses had to even pray for his life. Exactly. So now we got to pick this up at um, verse 23. Daniel 8 and verse 23. What does it say? And in the latter time of now, their kingdom. Now in the latter time of the four winds, go ahead and read. When the transgressors are come, come to, to the, the full, full. Uh -huh. a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences. Same guy we reading about. Mm -hmm. Same abomination. Same uh, 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 little horn. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. Shall stand up. Go ahead. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his, his own, own power. power. See, he ain't, he ain't working by his own exactly. power. He working, he working by his daddy's power. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and, and practice, practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Y'all see that? Make sure you understand that now. Mm -hmm. He's going to destroy the mighty and the holy people. Go ahead and read. And uh, through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hands. See, he's going to cause witchcraft to prosper in his hands. Go ahead and read. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. Go ahead. He shall also stand up to the, against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Ain't that something? The same guy now. Let's go back to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel 11. Turn over to the 11th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 32. We're going to get a look at what you, how this man going to handle these people. Because he's going he to handle you like, like you a child or a punk or something. Exactly. He's going to treat you like you're nothing. Mm -hmm. We're going to pick this up at verse, because he's trying to take as many people with him as he can. Satan, he's a spirit being. He didn't get but seven days. So now this man is operating in the stead of Satan. So he is going, he's going to beat Satan the devil in the fire. Exactly. We're going to pick it up at verse 32. Verse 32. Matter of fact, pick it up at verse 31 and we're going to read right into it. Yep. Go ahead and read. An arm shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary, sanctuary of strength. strength. Go ahead. And shall take away the daily sacrifice uh -huh. and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Go ahead. And such as do wickedly against the, the covenant, covenant shall he corrupt by flattery. Uh -huh. But the people that do know their God yes. shall be strong and, and do, do exploits. exploits. Go ahead and read. And they, that, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many, many uh -huh. yet they shall fall by the sword. You see what 